At number 10, Roberto Josu Vieira Abar. In 2019, an employee at the Davidson County Sheriff's Office in Tennessee accidentally consolidated an inmate's unresolved first-degree murder charge with some far less serious probation violation charges he was also being held on. When 26-year-old Roberto Josu Vieira Abar finished serving his time for violating probation, the murder charge was no longer visible in his file and he was released. Vieira Abar was one of three men charged with the murder in the 2017 shooting death of 26-year-old Luis Lopez, whose partially burned remains were discovered in a garbage bag in a wooded area. The suspects and the victim were friends, according to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, but the agency declined to reveal much else about the case. After being released in error, Vieira Abar turned himself in. In a statement, Sheriff Darren Hall said that there was no excuse for the mistake that resulted in the suspect being freed, and he reassured the public that the employee responsible would be disciplined. Vieira Abar was convicted of voluntary manslaughter and released in 2021 after serving just 30% of a six-year prison sentence. Just months later, he wound up back in police custody for allegedly breaking into a Nashville home and setting at least four fires inside. He's currently serving a three-year prison sentence for aggravated burglary and arson. Number 9. Noah Edwards Staff members at the Adult Detention Center in Indianapolis were tasked with releasing inmate named Nor Edwards, who had completed his sentence for drug and gun-related charges in 2022. But they accidentally released an accused killer with a similar name, Noah Edwards. It was a mix-up that could have been prevented if proper protocol had been followed. Noah Edwards is one of three suspects who are accused of luring 32-year-old Sheridan Tom into an abandoned home and shooting him during a robbery several months earlier. Luckily, the mistakenly freed fugitive was recaptured and taken back to jail 11 hours later. Marion County Sheriff Kerry Forrestal launched an investigation into the incident and fired a deputy for failing to review and verify that he was releasing the correct inmate. The victim's loved ones were understandably outraged by the error. Speaking to the Indy Star, Sheridan Tom's sister, Raven Kurznowski, said that it was unfair for Edwards to experience life outside jail when her brother no longer gets to experience life at all. She called for improved measures to ensure that the suspects remained behind bars. At number 8, Christopher Buggs. 26-year-old Christopher Buggs was awaiting trial for murder in 2021 while also serving a 30-day sentence for an unrelated criminal contempt case at Rikers Island in New York City. A paperwork error listed the 30-day sentence as the final disposition of his murder charge, and he was freed accordingly. Authorities announced that a manhunt was underway along with an investigation into how the clerical mix-up happened. The mistake was reported to the NYPD 12 hours after Bugs caught a bus out of Rikers and four employees were suspended without pay. Bugs was captured over a month later while browsing the Little Debbie snacks at a bodega in the Bronx and was immediately taken back to Rikers. The NYPD declined to discuss how they tracked the fugitive down. In the meantime, then-Mayor Bill de Blasio vowed to implement new measures to prevent the jail from accidentally freeing a murder suspect ever again. Bugs was accused of fatally shooting 55-year-old Ernest Brownlee during a dispute outside a Brooklyn bodega in 2018. He was already being held for second-degree murder when he was charged with contempt for screaming at a judge in a viral, profanity-laden rant. The paperwork error resulting in his release happened sometime after that. Brownlee's widow, Winifred Mackins, was understandably outraged by the mistake. Thankfully, he was back behind bars after five weeks of freedom. Number 7. Jeremy William Bennett Jeremy William Bennett was sentenced to 28 years in prison after pleading guilty to murder in 2015. Two years earlier, he and another young man named Andrew Boyd shot 54-year-old father of two, Larry House. They shot him inside the parking garage of a Tacoma, Washington apartment building during a robbery gone wrong. Because Bennett was just 17 years old at the time of the crime, he petitioned the court to reconsider his sentence and won a new sentencing hearing in 2022. As a result, the young convict sentence was labeled as vacated and he was freed. But this was done in error, and Pierce County Deputy Prosecutor Bryce Nelson was the first person to catch on to the mistake 
when he received an alert about Bennett's release through the state's notification system. Nelson contacted the State Department of Corrections, local law enforcement, the U.S. Marshal Service, and Bennett's lawyer. Bennett turned himself in with his attorney a little while later. He and his parents reportedly told jail staff that he was being released by mistake, but said that the employees let him go anyway. The status of his resentencing is unclear. Number 6. Garrett Oliver 29-year-old Garrett Oliver was being held at the Cook County Jail in Chicago for armed robbery in 2015 when authorities charged him with murder in an unrelated case dating back to 2012. He was convicted of armed robbery in 2017 and received a four-year prison sentence while still awaiting trial for the murder charge. Employees at the prison intake center determined that Glover had served enough time to satisfy the four-year sentence. Instead of sending him back to the Cook County Jail for the pending murder charge, where two other suspects in the case were being held without bond, they released him. By the time a prosecutor discovered the mistake a few days later, Glover had slipped out of sight and gone into hiding. An Illinois Department of Corrections spokesperson said that the agency never received paperwork regarding anything other than Glover's armed robbery or any other indicators that he should have been returned to Cook County custody. In the meantime, Cook County Sheriff's Office spokesperson Kara Smith said that they weren't focused on allocating blame at the moment, but their priority was to find Glover and put him back in jail. Most of the finger pointing came after the fugitive was discovered sleeping on the floor of a relative's apartment in suburban Atlanta, 750 miles away from Chicago, and more than a month after he fled from justice. While the outcome of Glover's murder case is still unclear, he was reportedly killed in a shootout in Markham, Illinois in 2020. Number 5. Charles Walker and Joseph Jenkins Florida authorities were baffled when convicted killers Charles Walker and Joseph Jenkins somehow obtained forged paperwork that reduced their life sentences to 15 years and walked free from a Franklin County prison in 2013. Jenkins was behind bars for killing an Orlando man in 1998 and was mistakenly released about a week before Walker, who was serving time for a murder he committed in 1999. Freedom was supposed to be nowhere in sight for either man when they pulled off the scheme, but the fake documents were very convincing. Jenkins initially traveled to Orlando where he registered as a released felon as required by law for actual released felons. He once again slipped under the radar in plain sight, unnoticed by the law enforcement employees who processed his registry. Walker did the same thing and both men visited their families before going on the run together. After receiving a notice about Jenkins' release, one of his victim's relatives contacted prosecutors and asked them to review the decision, at which point they realized that Walker and Jenkins had cleverly weaseled their way out of prison. Their loved ones were totally unaware that they had been released fraudulently and simply thought the men had miraculously managed to get their sentences reduced. When they found out the truth, they went on the news and urged the fugitives to turn themselves in, but the convicts had no plans to do so and received help from others, including someone who picked them up and rented them a hotel room in Panama City Beach on the Panhandle Coast. They were out for no more than a few weeks before they were recaptured and sent straight back to the penitentiary. But there's no telling how long they would have gone unnoticed if the family member of one of their victims hadn't raised the alarm. Authorities suspected that Walker and Jenkins worked with at least four co-conspirators, including a former inmate on the outside, to create the false documents and deliver them to the Orange County Clerk's Office. Nobody there noticed that the case numbers on the paperwork were false or that the judge's signature was forged. Needless to say, the state's Department of Corrections changed the way they handle early release paperwork. Number 4. Stone Colburn In 2021, authorities in Loudoun County, Virginia charged 23-year-old Stone Colburn with the murder of his brother's girlfriend, 24-year-old Natalie Crow. A mental evaluation found him incompetent to stand trial and the case was put on hold while the judge overseeing the case sent him to a state hospital to see if his condition improved. Concerned that Colburn might be faking his condition, prosecutors asked the judge for a second evaluation in 2022. In the meantime, Colburn's attorney hoped that the judge would find the young man incapable of being restored to sanity, which would require him to spend at least five years in a mental institution. The judge denied the request for a second evaluation, so prosecutors used a rare legal technique 
and moved to dismiss the murder case against Colburn while filing a new charge for concealing a dead body. The change would get the case moved to a different court, and the new charge was supposed to keep Colburn in custody while prosecutors worked through the complicated situation. But it was somehow released due to the confusion over the paperwork among jail staff, despite the prosecutor's best efforts to ensure that this wouldn't happen. Colburn was arrested the following evening in Chatham County, Georgia, and was transported back to Virginia. Number 3. Cornell Gray 22-year-old Cornell Gray was being held on suspicion of aggravated murder at the Cuyahoga County Jail in Ohio when he was unexpectedly set free in early 2022. Nobody really knew how it happened, but the murder charge was never entered into the jail's computer system and Gray was released on bond for an unrelated weapons charge. It was the second time in three years that a murder suspect was erroneously released from the facility. Gray is accused of shooting Marvin Keith four times outside the victim's home in Cleveland in 2021. Keith was rushed to the hospital where he died from his injuries. Authorities never revealed what they believe led up to the shooting or how they identified Gray as their prime suspect. U.S. Marshals arrested Gray in Houston, Texas after a months long investigation and manhunt. He was released from custody shortly after being extradited to Ohio. Gray was apprehended more than three weeks later in Lawrence, Indiana, outside Indianapolis. Number 2. Rodriguez Purnell 30-year-old Rodriguez Purnell was waiting to go on trial for first-degree murder in Baltimore, Maryland, when he was mistakenly released from jail in 2014. Purnell was being held in connection with the 2013 shooting death of a 27-year-old T.J. Rubottom after his first trial ended in a hung jury. He was recharged, but corrections officer confused his new case with the one that had been closed out and freed him. To make matters worse, the jail staff didn't even notice. They were informed of the mistake by the victim's family, who heard that Purnell was seen hanging out in their neighborhood and called the facility. Rue Bottom's mother, Jackie Davis, told ABC News that she feared for her family's safety and for the safety of witnesses in the case when she found out that the suspect was back out on the streets. She summed up her thoughts into a simple statement. This should have never happened. Police recaptured Purnell just blocks away from the scene of Rue Bottom's murder nearly a week after he was released and he was returned to jail. A statement from the Maryland Department of Public Safety and Corrections blamed the mix-up on a lapse in release procedures that would otherwise have identified the pending charges at the time of release. An employee was put on paid leave pending the outcome of an investigation. Purnell was found guilty of first-degree murder and two gun-related crimes. He was sentenced to life in prison. And at number one, Stephen Manzo. Murder suspect Stephen Manzo was arrested in 2020 in connection with the fatal shooting of a Long Beach, California man two years earlier. In early 2021, he was mistakenly released from the downtown Los Angeles jail where he was awaiting trial. Prosecutors and law enforcement agencies were quick to point the finger at one another for letting a suspected killer walk free. According to an LA County Sheriff's Department spokesperson, the agency received an order to release Manzo citing the dismissal of his case and complied with the order accordingly. As it turns out, the case against Manzo had been dismissed when he wasn't transported to court as scheduled, but all five charges were immediately refiled under a different case number. Under the new case, he was ordered remanded pending an arraignment, but someone clearly didn't get that part of the memo and Manzo was released. A nearly two-week-long multi-agency manhunt ensued before the 24-year-old was spotted getting into a vehicle and taken back into custody during a traffic stop. His bail was set at over $4 million. Thanks for watching. Would you rather have an armed and dangerous escaped murderer on the run in your immediate area or live next door to someone who was a person of interest in several suspicious deaths but never charged due to a lack of evidence? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. Bye for now.